Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and today we are covering Postman data filtering with Visualizer. Prior to this video, I had made another uh, Postman Visualizer, an introduction video, uh, using financial data and chart.js to map out stock changes in uh, over the day. And the reason for this video is because I was inspired by a colleague of mine, uh, Danny Dayton. Shout out to Danny Dayton. Uh, he created this uh, JSON path visualizer. And what it does is it allows you to use JSON path syntax and see live in action how it affects your JSON that you receive from your response. And seeing that uh, really uh, sparked interest in me because that's basically the same type of way that I develop. I try to beat syntax to hell and see if it uh, works or if it doesn't work. And given that test-driven development that I do, um, I really like this JSON path syntax uh, or visualizer because of the way it operates. And so I thought it would be great to have an addition to this using the XPath visualizer where we can do the same thing with XPathing and not only filter XML but also filter HTML. And in this video, I'm going to go over both of these uh, visualizer templates. I'll go a little bit under the hood to see how it works in code and then give you some examples to test it out. To get started, we're going to go ahead and do the XPath visualizer. And this is the one I created using uh, the JSON path visualizer as a template, actually. Uh, here, we're just doing a get request to HTTP bin.org forward slash XML, which gives us XML data. Here, we just pull back some jQuery in the script and we set up a few UI elements, one being a reset button, another being uh, just a normal button, so another being the input uh, tag with an ID of filter, another one being uh, input for showing errors, which uh, we have a checkbox to show that, and then the last one being a text area. Um, I needed a text area because working with XML, uh, text area works best in that scenario. And then we have the other script, which uses pm.getData function. And what that does is it gets the value that we pass it by through uh, from Postman or from the response, which needs to be some type of object. In this case, I had to wrap uh, the XML response in a JSON object, and that allowed me to pass that value through standard text. Here I use a DOM parser, and then I convert that XML into a... Uh, into an actual object, an XML doc. And then within here, this jQuery, I set some values for a uh, variables for node to null and then the XML to a blank string. And then I filter the data using XML.doc, evaluating the expression that we pass through here against the XML doc. And then here, this is for anything that has more than one uh, value through the iteration. We use this node that's set to null, and any time we do filter data that iterate next, it'll pass it another value until it's null. And then here we get that XML, and we set the outer HTML of that node to the XML string. And then this allows us to get that uh, HTML back and then display it onto the console or display it into that text area. And that's really it. Uh, other than that, we have some other jQuery things in here to show us when we have errors. Um, that's actually here in this catch for errors. Another part we have here in the jQuery is to set the content errors to empty. And here I actually set the content of the text area, its value to the XML that we get. And then here, this is just for sizing. I had to do that in order to size the XML or the text area correctly. And then lastly, the reset button clears everything out. And then we get to start over from scratch. So let's go ahead and show this out. Once I click send, here we go to visualize, and we get to see what we can do. So going to pretty, we get to see the slideshow XML we have, and then a couple slides under it. Now when I do visualize, and I do, let's say, two forward slash slides, we get two slides that come back, because you know this ma tag matches two elements within here. And we have the first slide and second slide. Now if I want to go through, and get that element by going two nodes down from the beginning, I can do that here as well. Or if I just want to get the first one, 
I can get that as well, and I only get the first one. Additionally, you can do anything else with XPathing here. So you, let's say, want to get this title tag where wake up to wonder widgets is the value. You can set that in there. Um, I'd encourage you to look at the, the uh, XPath uh, library or docs to see the syntax that you can use. But uh, XPathing is really powerful, and you can do so many things with that. Next, I'm going to go over some HTML we can do. And all I have to do is change the, the get to have forward slash HTML. And we can get some sample HTML back. And so here that is. And I'll go ahead and show you it basically the same example. We'll have the HTML tag. And then we see we get the value there. We're going to go to the body. And then we're going to get the H1 tag there. And here you could see it's uh, Herman Melville for Moby Dick. Now let's say we want to get the paragraph under it. We can do the div tag, and then the p tag, and then we get this paragraph tag here. So this is really powerful because now we can start manipulating the DOM and manipulating elements on the page using this XPath, get that node or get that tag, change its value to however we want, and, and then display that. And so that becomes really powerful, at least in front-end development, and changing uh, how the front-end works. And this is a great way to test that out with Postman. Mm -hmm. And additionally, any anything you can do with XML, you can do in here as well. So you can have multiple different ways to get tags or sets of tags using text, uh, CSS classes, so many things. Now we're going to go over the JSON path visualizer example. And it really encompasses the same things. The only difference here is that we have a JSON path script tag that we have to pull down that library. We then have, you know, the filter input, the reset button, the show errors uh, input, and the, let's see, the span to also display those errors, and the errors ID, div tag, and the paragraph tag for content. Here you can use a paragraph tag because it doesn't use the greater than or less than signs, which doesn't really work well with uh, HTML when displaying, unless you escape it and you have to do the at greater than or at less than signs for it. And then here we have the same type of uh, jQuery in order to do the same thing. We do the filter data using JSON path query and then getting the actual query syntax here. Then we parse that out and then we have catching for any errors. We could show that as well. We have the reset button to clear it out and then the function just to show those errors. So I had forgotten to show that uh, errors in the last response, but I'll go ahead and just show it here in JSON path visualizer as it works the same way. So here we have some uh, values for uh, JSON path. We're going to go ahead and go to visualizer and follow that example name.first. So if we do name.first, you can see we get a, an array of names, which is really nice. Now if you want to go in a higher level order to pull down in uh, order from top to bottom, what we'll do is you just do a zero for the first tag, and then I can do dot info, and it gives me that info uh, object. Or if you want to do dot results, and then dot, oh, we have to go to the first value there as well, and then dot gender, we could pull down female, which is that value there. And so that's really nice and convenient and shows us many things we can do. Now, if I click show evaluation errors, we can see, hey, this is improper uh, JSON path syntax, which is very useful because then it really guides us into executing the right JSON path syntax or putting it in here. Additionally, the same thing we have with the XML visualizer. So if I do show evaluation errors and I just kind of start adding random things in here, so such as different characters, we can see the same type of oh, excuse me, syntax errors that we have here. And so they're basically a mirror of each other, uh, one just using JSON path and one using XPath. Uh, I really hope you guys got a lot of, of value out of this. I find it very useful uh, for really doing my parsing and getting prerequisites for me to continue coding and, and writing my apps. Also, feel free to uh, check out the description below for these templates and you'll be able to download them and uh, play with JSON path and XPath on your own. If you guys really like this content, I'd 
so much would love it if you would uh, give me a thumbs up on it. And if you really like this stuff with Postman or network security, anything like that, go ahead and click the subscribe button. And just to be sure you know when the next video comes out, go ahead and click that bell for notification. And lastly, if you're really interested and you know you got any ideas on how I can make this better or you just want to add your thoughts, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'd really appreciate it and I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.